Does this look familiar to you? You thought, let's add a moss pole to the plant. It will help it grow bigger. And now you're dealing with the consequences of your actions. Stick around for this video and let's chat through it. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. I'm already pointing to it. It's houseplants. <laughs> so for today's video, I wanted to dive into a controversial topic, I will say, or possibly my opinions on the topic might be a bit controversial. Maybe not actually, considering some of the comments that I've got on recent videos from a lot of people being dissatisfied the same way that I am with the concept of moss poles. And this is a moss pole that I created myself. So it's got a clear acetate back and it's filled with moss. And then there is a kind of netting, I want to say. It's not quite netting, but something for the roots, the aerial roots to go in. So before we dive into any of that, let's have a quick chat about what moss poles are for the people that maybe don't know. So a lot of people might have actually seen quar poles and I'm trying to think now, I'll see if I can add a little clip or a picture here of a quar pole. And this is something that we usually find in plant stores and garden centers. And essentially the concept of moss poles, quar poles, all of these things is that they are meant to replicate the natural environment for a lot of these plants. So obviously you can see the esmeral dents behind me, that is a plant that is not on a moss pole, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But you'd imagine if, if the shelf wasn't a shelf and it was a tree, this plant would go against the tree and then it would pull in its aerial roots and it would come out from nodes. So I can show you on this plant here. So that would be a node and there would normally be an aerial root that would go into the tree at that point there. This is because the plants use these aerial roots essentially to go into the trunk of the tree to a certain point or wrap around the trunk of the tree, depending on kind of the texture that is around the tree. I'm not entirely sure with that one. And it does a few things. So one, it still acts like a root, so it can still absorb some moisture from there, but it also gives that plant some stability by being attached to that tree. So imagine this would be a tree. So it'd be attached to the tree and that way it can actually start going, okay, I've hit something that's given me some support. Let's go up now, especially if it's a climbing plant. Generally with most moss poles, you'll be putting them onto climbing plants. It makes sense because it replicates again that tree and that environment that they're used to, they want to climb. And they'll start heading up the tree, in nature at least, and they'll go closer and closer to the light. But because at every single node, they could be putting even more aerial roots and wrapping around that tree, it gives them more stability, which means that they can start sizing up the leaves. <laughs> it might not be a shock to everybody to realize that that is the main reason why people might want to use moss poles. A lot of the plants that we get, they might start off with smaller leaves, but we really truly want to see those big, big, large and in charge leaves that are happening. It might not just be the size of the leaves as well. I'm thinking of things and I can't, mm, I don't have an example Monstera to show you, but I will add here, I mean, it's Monstera deliciosa. So for instance, certain plants will get splits or holes in their leaves as they kind of mature and climb up the tree and have got that support structure there. So you can understand again, why people might want to use something that replicates that notion of being in nature, that notion of being near a tree and being able to attach to it. Now let's talk about some of the problems. Well, let's talk about the biggest problem when it comes to moss poles specifically, whether or not you are buying a moss pole, whether or not you are making a DIY moss pole. I think I've done a video on my DIY moss poles there. <laughs> For anybody that wants to watch it, I will add it there. Probably by the end of the video, you might not want to, but <laughs> I will link it at the top. Essentially, the, the kind of concept is relatively straightforward. You need something that will be supporting itself, the self-supporting, so when you put it in a pot. So a lot of the times, if you're buying something from a supermarket or a plant store, it's usually those coir poles. So it's usually a wooden pole wrapped in cocoa coir kind of fibers. It might even be tree fern fibers, depending on how posh you want to get. And you would stick the 
pointy edge, essentially, of the moss pole into the substrate. So depending on what you're growing, if you're growing in semi-hydro or if you're growing in soil mix, just so that it's kind of anchored into the growing media, and then you'd put it close to the plant, you'd make sure that the plant is kind of attached if you can. So you can usually get these weird staples sometimes for the quad poles. They kind of look like metal long staples that you would kind of staple the plant in to the quad pole. You could put, uh, I don't think I've got any on here. So you could put metal plant ties. You can put the Velcro plant ties. I do suggest the Velcro plant ties are a bit more gentle on the plant itself. But, and essentially that's, that's what you need to do. And the plant should do its own thing at that point. However, let's talk about some of the issues, shall we? So the one thing is, if you've ever had a quad pole and you think, you know what, I'm going to keep it moist just so that those roots have got not only something to attach to, but they're getting some of the moisture in there. <laughs> Show of hands down below who's tried to do that and how quickly you all gave up on that. Because the problem that happens with both moss poles and with quad poles, I'm kind of pointing at a quad pole of the epipremnum skeleton key that I've got in front of me is that they dry out and they dry out quite quickly and then you're either spraying it all the time, so misting it, or you're actually watering the whole thing, which then leads to another problem that if I'm watering this every day, then it means that whatever substrate the plant is in is going to be sapping wet all of the time, which could then lead to root rot, which is kind of a double-edged sword because you're trying to keep this alive to keep the aerial roots alive, but then everything else is down below, which is the predominant way that the plant is getting its water and its nutrients is dying off because it's too wet. <laughs> <laughs> Issues, basically. <laughs> so that's the biggest challenge, I think, for most people is, are you going to keep it wet? How are you going to keep it wet without causing any further problems? And that's the big challenge, I think, for most people. And I'll show you mine again, and it is a bone dry. <laughs> the other thing I will mention with this, and this was mentioned in the video when I was creating the moss poles, I was just using straight sphagnum moss. Anybody that's creating moss poles, especially of a certain size, the level of cocoa, not cocoa coir, sphagnum moss that you would need to use is quite high. So quite a lot of moss that you would need to use. Moss is not cheap. So one of the big challenges is if you want to create a large moss pole, you're going to need a lot of sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is not cheap, so it gets a bit pricey. Now, there is other solutions as well. I did try it with some of my moss poles, and I will kind of show you around in just a moment. But where you can put uh, cocoa chunks, cocoa coir chunks in, basically. Those, at least here in the UK, are also not necessarily cheap. You can get quite a lot of them, and they kind of fill up the space, and they can also retain some of the moisture. But one way or another, it's not going to be the cheapest thing in the world for you to create. So that's one thing. <laughs> the expense of making it. It also takes time. None of these things happen quickly, like you're going to need to do, and depending on how DIY inclined you are, it's going to take a while to kind of figure out how you're going to do it, what materials you're going to use. Yes, there's other videos that they explain, but it slowly adds up. You could go down the pre-done route, and at least as far as I am aware, most of the time the pre-done poles that you can find are almost exclusively, at least where I am based, coca qua poles. They're not moss poles, basically. So, and it kind of makes sense because they dry out so, so quickly. So those are the big, big challenges. And obviously can't do a video talking about moss poles without kind of doing a tip of the hat to the one person that I'm aware of that does it exceptionally well, and some of you might be aware of it as well, is Sydney Plant Guy, I think the name is. And stunning collection, stunningly large plants with moss poles, and he's got his own way of doing it. And it if you do kind of want to see and you want to go down that route 100%, I do always advise, go and have a look at some of his videos. I could be a very cheap imitation of the way that I do it to basically the way that he would do it. But even he says through a few of his videos when I was looking at, his collection is getting larger, 
but he doesn't have an awful lot of plants. I mean, I've got over 600 plants. If I had to water <laughs> 600 moss bowls <laughs> and keep them moist, I think I wouldn't be doing anything all day other than doing that. <laughs> so that's not even an option for me. But you can do it for a few of your plants if you want to do it. And if there's ones that you kind of really want to give that extra attention to, basically. There are solutions that, again, people like Sydney Plant Guy and other YouTubers and other influencers or other people that you might talk to might have. And that might be kind of putting um, a cup or something like a funnel at the top and slowly dripping the water in because this is another issue with the way that these things work. Moss gets exceptionally hydrophobic when it's bone dry. And by hydrophobic, I mean it physically doesn't want to get wet. So you need to do it slowly. So it's not even an option of, I'm in a hurry, I'm just going to quickly water the moss pole, it's going to instantly get wet, and then I can get on with my life. No, no, you, if you're going to be doing this without kind of a funnel or without a small upturned cup or a bottle so that it can drip it slowly, you're going to be there for a while, slowly, slowly dripping water in so it can start getting moist and then eventually that moisture can go all the way through the moss pole and the, the deeper or the larger the moss pole, the wider, thicker the moss pole is, the longer that will take. Ah. And I will say this, I've got plastic backs here and it's only open in the front. And the reason for that is because me, like everybody else, had done the usual moss poles, where it was just usually wrapping some moss around the pole and putting some fishing line or something around it to just keep it together. Do you know how quickly that dries out? That could dry out two or three times a day. So, <laughs> so the plastic would obviously keep the moisture in for a bit longer, basically. So you don't have to do it quite so <laughs> <laughs> quite so often. <laughs> oh, the nervous laughter. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you that I'm hoping are going to be agreeing with me down in the comments below, purely from comments that I've seen from previous <laughs> videos. <laughs> but yeah, so there is that. That's the biggest challenge. Keeping the substrate too wet because you have to water it too often and keeping this thing wet or kind of moist as much as you possibly can. <laughs> Those for me are the big ones. So it's the time constraint, it's the expense, it's the dedication, and it's that kind of agitation of trying to water these things slowly. And I know a lot of people might say, you know what, I've got the upturned bottle on top of the moss pole and I leave it on there and I don't really have to worry about it, but it will do that. And I'm just like, yeah, but you still then need to go back and potentially empty the water from the cash po, which has come in from that bottle because obviously it's yes, it's going to slowly water the moss pole, but there will be some moisture coming in. So there's even more things that you need to do. <laughs> so yeah, there is that. And I generally don't like to poo poo on things unless I've got other potential options that you could try. And I'm going to be honest with this one, they're weak at best, but there's something that you could potentially try. And there's some alternatives basically. So one, you might be able to see at the top here. And the reason why this isn't working is because I kind of gave up on it. And even this was taking too much time. So one is getting something like a wicking rope. This needs to be done when you're creating the moss pole at the point of creation. I have been able to add this in post creation by shoving it in with a chopstick and pulling it through, but it takes a bit of finagling. And what it then does is making sure that, and this works specifically well with semi-hydro mixtures, but you can see then that that wicking rope is sitting within the reservoir and the reservoir of water there is also helping wick some of that moisture up into the moss bowl. And it works kind of okay. The problem is if this dries out completely, you then have to re-wet the wick because the wet, the wick, wet, wet, wick, 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 wick. Oh, so many W words. The wick itself needs to be wet in order for that kind of capillary action to happen, which is essentially the capillary action is moving that water from the reservoir all the way up. Now, that can work on occasions. The other option is, and I'm trying to see if I've got anything that's still on board. I do, but I will add a picture here. And you can add something on a board. Now, there's a couple of things to remember about a board, and I have done a video about kind of 
growing plants on a board rather than a moss pole. And again, I'll link it at the top there. But it is something that's slightly different. It's the same thing as well if you're letting a plant attach to like a wall or a flat surface. Yes, you will get aerial roots. They tend to be different. So let me see if I can get you some aerial roots that you might be able to see from a moss pole. So here you can see what it's like for a plant growing on a board and you can kind of see how the roots are attaching and you can kind of see there that they're slightly different than they would be on a moss pole. So they're much smaller but they've got almost like a hair-like structure on them. I do have one that I can show you. So up here is where I have my Philodendron Esmeralda spirit. And this is doing quite well at the moment. You can see the new leaf coming in. And you might say, if you were gonna do a video like this, why did you give this a moss pole? Because I wanted to see how it was gonna work out. So you might, hopefully if I hide my face from there, you might be able to see that root going in and attaching. And you can see there, and eventually it will go back down into the substrate. Now, first problem with this, if you've already got a pot, with a plant in it and you don't want to repot it, you will have the moss pole sitting at the top of the soil level, which then means that you need to put something like a support stick to go further into the soil because otherwise this will have nothing for purchase. So <laughs> that's another thing. So yes, and I do appreciate that a lot of times with moss poles, it, it requires a lot of forward thinking. And I might not be the only one that doesn't always have that much forward thinking where you are repotting a plant, so you need to think about repotting a plant, substrate that you want to use, the pot that you want to use, and then think about, oh, you know what, I need to make a moss pole. Oh, and I also maybe need to find a way to keep it moist as well at all times, all at the same time, because then what you can do is make sure that you are burying part of the moss pole into the actual substrate itself, and it stays a bit more solid as well. And yes, and I will say the same thing that Sydney Plant Guy will say is essentially think about this whole thing as a bit of an air layering situation. You will have roots in here. If you can keep it moist enough, you will have roots in here. So if you ever want to take a cutting, you can, you've already, it's already rooted into the moss. So it's a lot easier for you to then just transition that plant into soil. However, as I said, there is that kind of notion that you need to keep this as wet as possible. This one, for instance, doesn't have the wicking and I just water it as and when. I will also show you this example where you can see hopefully that it's not just moss, but it's also quar chunks, basically. So that is another thing. The other option is not using a moss pole. I know it sounds dumb, but not using a moss pole. Either letting your, your plant trail down or <laughs> people that have been here for a while know where I'm gonna go with this, janky support stick for the win. And I will show you one with a janky support stick. So here you go. This is my Philodendron Sharonii, and this is just on a janky support stick. And please note, the leaves are not getting any smaller. They're not sizing up particularly well either, but they're not getting any smaller. Now, that leads me to a very important topic, and that is the topic of why are you giving your plant a moss pole or support for that matter? So let me make that more specific. So certain types of plants, and the problem with this is it's a bit of trial and error unless you come across videos like mine or other people online where they might be sharing their experiences with this. So for instance, this Meryl Dense behind me has never had a moss pole, will never have a moss pole. It doesn't need a moss pole to get huge leaves basically. So that is one thing. The other thing that you need to remember, so that is one thing. So in, in the sense that if you don't want to give your plant a moss pole and you know that, that plant doesn't need a moss pole, don't bother. Just give it some support. So janky support stick, bamboo sticks, whatever you want to give it just to give it some structure because otherwise they do get quite heavy. If, however, you do want to get your plant to maybe get splits on the leaves or get bigger leaves and you know that it needs to climb, I would maybe present the option of something like the planks that we were talking about a moment ago. And I don't think I can easily pull any of my planks out to show you. Lies, I've been able to find the plank or at least be able to get it off quite easily. So let me show you what the roots look like there. Can you see what's happening there on the plank? And you might be able to see 
there as well. So it will attach to the plank. And sorry, by the way, this is my very sad looking Amidra Medium Blue, which is doing what an Amidra Medium does and just runs. <laughs> <laughs> but look, the point I'm trying to make is proved here. All of the splits and even secondary fenestrations, so the secondary holes in the middle of the rib as well. So the point I'm trying to make is that you don't necessarily always need to have something like the moss pole in order to get those splits and to get those holes in the leaves. You can get it with a plank. The big issue here is, and it is an issue, that's what I want to talk about it, is if you look at those roots that we were talking about, there, how they're attaching, they're not particularly big. This is not like air layering. So can I remove this from the board? Yes, I can. Will it potentially ruin that aerial root and I'd still need to propagate it as if it was a regular cutting? Yes. So that is what you lose with this method. You lose the fact that a moss pole, if it's kept moist and you can do all of those things and you can tick all of those boxes and you're a much more patient person than I am. <laughs> You can then, in theory, just chop the plant off. It's got the roots that are proper roots in the moss itself, and then you can just plant it, and it won't skip a beat, basically. This one, you're going to have to propagate it, basically. So there is that. But if the only thing that you're trying to achieve is to get mature leaves because you want the plant to attach to something, most climbing plants, most climbing aroids, at least, that I've experienced, will do fine with just a flat surface, basically. I've also got my Cebu Blue Epipremnum, and it's attached to the wall, and that's already starting to get larger leaves and fenestrations as well. I will also hopefully find a picture and add it here of another Epipremnum that I've got in the bathroom upstairs, where I've just got it growing on some leftover like bits of wood from some random DIY or flat pack that kind of is no longer with me, but it's attaching, the roots are there, the leaves are getting bigger, the fenestrations are happening. So there is that to be said. You don't always need a moss pole to get the bigger leaves or to get the splits in the leaves as well. So if that's your main concern, don't be because there are other options that you could use. There is also, and I will mention about new materials that have come onto the market recently, as far as I'm aware. And that is something that I think I've seen, which is kind of potato. It's kind of almost like a, a carpeting fiber that is either squash potato skins or something along those lines that's wrapped around the pole. Whether or not that's easy enough to keep moist, I don't know. Something that I've seen on a few other people's Instagram, and this is predominantly for people that are, might be growing in Florida, which is slightly the warmer climates, and they might be growing some of these tropical house plants outdoors, is using kind of uh, a spongy material. So I think it's that spongy material that you might get as insulation around pipes. And basically, because they're watering the plants normally, they would just water the whole thing. That would saturate with watering, but obviously they're watering it more frequently because it's outside. And that works as a bit of a temporary, or not even temporary, a bit of a outdoor moss pole, basically. So there is that option. The other option, obviously, that you could do, depending on how fancy you want to go with it, is to do something along the lines of having a drip irrigation system. Now this is, we're going extra here. We're going really, really extra here. So something like a drip irrigation system, especially there are ones that you can get indoor ones. They are not cheap. I will tell you that for nothing, where you can put the little dripper at the very top of something like your moss pole. So it will constantly be dripping or it will drip quite often throughout the day, meaning it keeps it moist. Again, the issue there is Will it maybe keep it too moist? Because that's the other issue. If you're keeping this entire moss bowl too wet for too long, you could still be causing root rot to happen within the aerial roots as well and causing issues to the plant. <laughs> Another option, and I will hopefully add a picture here, is something that I've done on a different plant. So that I've done on my Raphidophora hongongensis, which is similar kind of moss pole to this. And it's sitting on top of the substrate of semi-hydro substrate. But I've made it so that the moss pole itself is slightly higher. And I've got a little water reservoir at the bottom. And that's where I've added in that wicking material. And I will every night before I go to bed, I'll just make sure that that little pot of water is topped up. And it will constantly put. And it's the only one that has managed to stay wet throughout the whole thing. That plant is loving life, basically.
Coming on to existing solutions, stuff that you don't necessarily need to make as a DIY, something like, and I've got it in front of me, and I will lift it up and show you now. This is how the Epipremnum skeleton key is growing. And again, for the people that have been here for a while, they know why I'm looking up. But this is on a Quar poll, and you might be able to see it through there. So Epipremnum specifically, I think Monsteras is another good example. They are happy growing on a Quar pole because they don't need their roots. And a lot of the times they don't turn into those really small roots that I showed you before on a plank. They are proper kind of aerial roots that will dig into the Quar pole. I find with a lot of these Quar poles, whether it's Monstera, the Liciosa type Monstera I'm talking about here specifically, or an Epipremnum, I don't even find that I need to keep that Quar. I don't do anything to keep those Quar poles wet. And I know some people might say, okay, you're in a conservatory, your conservatory's got a lot of humidity, but even the ones that I've got in my house, they're fine. Those aerial roots are chunky. So they will kind of dive into that. They might not be the best thing. It's again, even harder to kind of remove that out if you ever want to take a cutting to then root it out, but you might get a bit more roots from putting there, but that's not for all plants. You might also be able to see this way around that a lot of these plants here, some of the philodendrons, so we've got the Florida ghost, I've got the datum at the back. There's also the Dark Lord and the Painted Lady there as well. None of these have got moss poles. They've just got janky support sticks. It's fine. And they will get aerial roots for days and very, very long aerial roots. And they will find their way into different things. This one's managed to get underneath my plant shelf. So you don't always, always have to worry about how you are going to get them to attach. They might not need to attach. I will also show you another plant now that does not have a moss pole. Please note, this is the philodendron Jose, no, it's not the Jose Bueno. It is, it might be, no. I will try to remember the name, Paraiso Verde, there we go. But have a look at the height. I mean, I know this is a very fast growing plant, but it doesn't need a moss pole. You can see the aerial roots for days, it's fine. The other thing that I do wanna talk about, however, is some plants that most people don't think need moss poles, and they can occasionally need a moss pole. So if I bring you around with me this way, you might be able to see, and I'll see if I can bring it off the shelf so you can actually see it. This is an Anthurium cuticuensis. Can you see how it's growing? And it's not been growing for that long in my care, but this is something that it's got a sphagnum moss collar, but do I think this would do well with something like a moss pole or something giving it support? 100%. So there are plants that you might not consider like some anthuriums, where you're just like, an anthurium, it doesn't really need the support. It doesn't even know that. Some of them do grow quite, quite quickly and they get a lot of height and they would benefit from something like support. Do you need to necessarily have a moss pole? No, it could just be a support stick again. And I'll give you an actual example of another anthurium that is essentially one that could climb. So, very, very cool, my anthurium hybrid, which is a Zara X Michelle. So, so happy with it. But let me show you something else whilst I drop everything down. So this is the Anthurium erysimoides. Can you see the support stick? So this is another one that benefits from a bit of that structure and it's already blooming for me again because of that support stick. But I encourage all of you, if you've got any of your own experiences that you're happy to share with, I know this is gonna be one that's gonna split all of you. Some people are diehard moss pole fans. Some people have never and will never try moss poles. Some people have tried them and they're mm, still not entirely convinced basically. So I would love to have that discussion with all of you down in the comments below. But coming into some of my final thoughts with this, do you 100% need a moss pole? No, not for most situations. There are other alternatives that you could do. You could do planks, you could do support sticks. Are certain plants going to do their best on something like a moss pole? Yeah. But can some plants do just as well on something like a quar pole that you don't really need to baby? Also, yes. So just bear that in mind and make conscious decisions when you're choosing your plants, especially as to where you might want to see these plants go. If you can, I know it's not always going to be as easy as that, but if you can and you've got that tiny bit of foresight, then you'll kind of know because 
Let me give you an example. Everybody wants this it plant and you've seen it and you really like it as well and you want to get it as well. But the only way that that plant is going to get to the point where you like the look of it and its maturity and all of these things is by giving it a moss pole and you do not have the time to dedicate to that moss pole. I'm not saying don't get the plant, but manage your own expectations there to kind of say, uh, it's probably never going to look quite like that. Am I okay with it looking a bit more juvenile potentially? So it's things like this that always need to be considered, I think. And that's actually, for me, it's almost better, like preempting it before it becomes an issue and before you're kind of going, oh, I've got these plants and I'm attached to them now and I really want to see them do quite well. The only way I'm going to do it is through a moss pole. You, <laughs> sounds horrible, but you might end up starting to resent that plant for all the extra work that you need to do to get it to just the level of something that you like. So... That sounds a bit cruel, but it's worth kind of giving it a thought once or twice or three times or whether or not it's feasible. As I said, if you've got a collection and it's only like 5, 10, 20 plants and you can dedicate the time and you, you're getting to a point now where you want to start dedicating a bit more time to your collection, maybe try something like a moss pole and tinker and do all these things and kind of baby the plants. It gives you a bit of an outlet for that babying kind of the overwaterers in us, where they're always kind of like the hovering plant parents. It, it gives a bit of an outlet for that. As somebody that has done this for a long time, and I've seen my collection grow to exponential levels and see that happen to a lot of people, that is also going to be something that you're going to just, you're going to need to consider. I've, you've got 20 plants now. You're really getting into it. For instance, you want to get everything on a moss pole. That's fine. It won't necessarily stop you in a year's time from having 200 plants and then you're still dealing with moss poles. And if you get into the habit of doing moss poles who do it all the time, burn out. <laughs> Just be cognizant of how you do things for your own mental health, because for a lot of us, this is meant to be a calming experience, not something that stresses us out. So make your life easy. Just consider things from earlier times. I say this, I would have never have listened to this advice because I am stubborn and pig-headed and that's just me. But yeah, it is one of those things that it's, it's good to kind of keep that in mind. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to touch on. I, hopefully this wasn't too much of a negative video. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.